Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Shattered Sky. Now you might notice that the resources are different this time around and that's because the run I did yesterday actually failed. But I really wanted to keep the commentary for that one because I really liked it. So I had to do a different take and um, I went ahead and dropped the no bomb condition because um, I just kind of wanted to get this out and um, the game is kind of tough to no bomb and I, I had a couple takes after that which just game over from trying to no bomb so I realized that it kind of wasn't worth it in the interest of time so what I'll do instead for no bombs is that I'll just do like a stream or something later or another day and we'll just go for the no bomb there also I want to point out that this is a post commentary um, so I had commentated the LP like I had done this take and everything, and for some reason DX Tori didn't record my mic, even though I told it to. So yeah, I'm sorry. This is gonna have to be post commentary. I could do another take, but honestly, I've done like five takes of stages four through six, and I just <laughs> I can't do it anymore. So we're gonna have to get post commentary this time around. Luckily, with post commentary, it does make it a little easier for me to explain things. Um, so anyway, I should have already been explaining how stage 4 worked. So, the one big thing you'll notice is that, I mean, this stage in general highlights this, is that when you kill an enemy, bullets around the enemy will disappear. So, what I've been doing was I've been memorizing the spawn points of all these enemies and killing them super fast and clearing out their bullets before they can really do much. Um, you'll see that on the fairy coming up right now this fairy so if you just memorize where it spawns and kills it then it'll get rid of the bullets that it spawns upon death alright so for the mid boss non um, it might look like it's a random mess of random walls but actually there is a safe area on the left of the screen right there on that wave just go a little bit to the left and you'll get a gap that's just how it works um, and then right after that, you'll get a few more fairies, and then it'll introduce the motif of this stage, which is the laser raindrop fairies. These are quite common on the latter half of the stage. Now, as soon as you kill it, make your way to the right, because there's going to be an aimed section coming at you, and you'll want to start streaming that. And you'll want to start streaming it to the right, because if you're on the right side of the screen, then you'll be able to kill this fairy here that spawns, and then you'll want to dash to the left and kill the other fairy that spawns. Then if you go back in the middle, you'll be able to kill the um, laser raindrop fairy and then dash to the left because on the left side of the screen, one of those aimed things appears again. So yeah, you can see the general common theme among this stage is just to memorize the spawn points of the enemies and make quick work of them. Um, it's a lot, a lot of rooting, but it's very, 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 very doable. Actually. Most of the time you make a mistake in this stage, it's just going to be because you hit random raindrop bullets. Those are like, no joke, the hardest threats in the stage. Uh... Alright. So on this part here, you don't even have to worry about killing them both because the part will end as the mid boss appears. So yeah, I just kind of chilled there for a bit. Now this mid boss is like the edgiest mid boss ever. <laughs> she wants you to leave her alone. So the non spell isn't too bad, but the spell card is actually ironically one of the harder spells in the game. It's one of the top three hardest things um, for weird reasons too. It just it's not something you can underestimate. So the hearts will curve at really weird angles and then you'll also have raindrops coming out of nowhere and the raindrops can spawn anywhere on the screen so if they kinda spawn near you you might be screwed but um, fortunately the raindrops don't get covered by the hearts they they pass over the hearts so you won't have to deal with any hidden raindrops surprising you um, I actually did capture it in this run which is really nice it's a really difficult spell so capturing it does feel kinda good now after the mid boss, you want to immediately start streaming because yeah, there's um, a lot of streaming going on here. But thankfully, they don't require you to move too much while you're moving, so you don't have to like do wide stream. You can just stream like slowly, and it'll be okay. Um, there's like tons and tons of streaming waves though, so you don't really have any time to use any of the vortexes unless you want to bomb. But I won't be um, doing that just because I don't really think it's worth it.
Alright, now the end of the stage is kind of a callback to EOSD Stage 4 with the three fairies that clear the screen and then the aim stuff. Now, I kind of streamed too quickly here. Actually, no, it wasn't even that. I just, I didn't really understand how to get away from the fireballs, but the gap was pretty clear. I just, at the time of doing that, I didn't really know what was going on. Um, you can kind of see why I didn't go with the no bombs after all, because, um, as much as I love this game, it is pretty common to just randomly make a mistake on, like, the stupidest things. So, things like no bomb are actually surprisingly difficult, but not because of, like, an overwhelming amount of hard patterns, but just because of, like, weird deaths everywhere. You see what I mean when you play the game. Anyway, um, this is Akami, and her fight's going to be different depending on the character, except for the last spell. Now, with Reimu's opener, what you need to do is you need to read the white clouds as they're coming down, because if the cloud reaches you, then a bullet will spawn on you. So the dodging to that spell requires you to read ahead, that way you don't get into that path. Now, for the first spell, Phantom Pain, it's actually really easy. Um, so... I mean, it's not trivial, but it's not as hard as it looks. You don't have a lot of space or time to move in, but um, you can see the jelly beans inside of the bubbles, so you have a little extra time to know what they're going to spawn at and what they're going to aim for. So, yeah. Now, for this non-spell, I used to have a strat where I would memorize a part on the enemy marker. That way, I can safe spot these black bullets here by being directly in the middle. Unfortunately, I wasn't in that safe spot, so I had to bomb. But if you memorize that safe spot, then it actually becomes really easy because then you can just damage rush the non. And that's kind of what you want to do for that non anyway because trying to... Um, Go around the sides of the screen is really risky. And for this spell, it's actually also pretty easy. I just kind of derped there because I restreamed wrong, but you can easily make a strat in spell practice. Now, for this non spell, you're really going to need to focus on the bubbles. And st like, it might be tempting to use the glowy balls to find a lane, and they are good markers, but the thing is, is that the bubbles have really weird direction changes. So, like, it's hard to explain, but just make sure you're watching for the bubbles. <laughs> Alright, now for the timeout spell, F5 Tornado. This spell is kind of tricky. Um, it usually doesn't get that bad, but um, you can't underestimate it. You don't have to worry about running into Akami because she doesn't have a hitbox on this. It really doesn't get hard until the end, and the, the tricky part is the fact that the shadows kind of obscure your vision, and you're kind of dodging black on black. It's not... I, it's a kind of questionable design there, but I mean, it is what it is, and you kind of gotta accept it for what it is. Now, Red Tongue is... might be the hardest spell in the game. I don't know, there's a spell in stage 6 which can give it a run for its money. Um, basically, you're forced outside of the center, so you'll have to like go to the side and then go back in the center. Um, the hard part is the fact that the shadows kind of obscure your vision. So like those ball bullets can kind of like fling themselves down before you even catch them and like kill you. Um, there I just kind of died from a wall. But um, it's not as bad as it seems. Uh, it used to be pretty tough actually, but it did get nerfed a bit, which is pretty nice. Because the old version of this spell was like... Ugh. And that was stage four. Now then, for stage five, you're immediately going to be greeted by a lot of streaming. Just really fast streaming that's trying to overwhelm you. So I like to tap to the right, and then I'll like tap to the left. And then I'll tap to the right. Right here, I don't even know what really happened here. I just kind of died. Yeah, I guess I wasn't killing those enemies, so they kind of, like, fired at me from below. Anyway, you'll want to start from the middle and stream to the left on that part. And then the stars here basically form based on your position on the screen. So you can actually memorize how to dodge that part. So it's not bullshit. Now, fortunately, on this wave here, you won't get the three streams, but only one, so you'll have more space to move in. Now, make your way to the left and immediately kill this as soon as possible, and then immediately dash to the left. Um, 
This is probably the worst this part can get, but as you can see here, as long as you're making quick work of the enemies, you'll be fine. Make sure to dash to the left, because if you're in the middle, then you'll have a lot of room when you stream to the right, but if you're already on the right side of the screen, you'll run out of space to move in when the things start aiming. So make sure to do that dash to the left before the aim stuff comes, otherwise you will get walled. Now the part before the mid boss is a breather, a really big breather, so make use of it. And yes, Saidi is back. She just doesn't know when to go away. Um. So her non-spell is actually pretty easy. Like, you'll rarely ever die to it. Sometimes it can give you a really mean situation, but the fireballs, as I said before, their reduced hitbox means that they're not as much of a problem as they used to be. Um, this spell here, though, is kind of uh, a lottery ticket spell. N n not to be, like, mean or anything, but, um... Basically, if a meteor does go in the middle, and if they keep going in the middle, then you're kind of screwed. Like, right there, there wasn't really anything I could do. But that doesn't really happen that much. It, it's just one of those rare situations. I still would advocate for staying in the middle as much as possible, simply because getting the speed kill on that is really important. Now for this second half of the stage, it's really important to memorize where these twisty fairies spawn from. Like as you can see, I streamed from the middle to the left, and the reason I went to the left was because I wanted to kill that twisty star fairy as soon as possible. But as you can see, if you are making quick work of all these enemies, this stage is actually not that bad. It's more of an intimidation stage, really. It, there's a lot of methods for everything, and honestly, it's not that bad. The hardest part is actually this part right here, simply because... The Meteor RNG can kind of screw you over if it forces you to, <gasps> to the wall. Um, really, you want to watch out for the star ones because the star twists can be really mean. But thankfully, in this run in particular, I didn't have any problems with that. Now, um, be careful of the twisty fairies here. This is probably the most dangerous they will get simply because it's pretty hard to... They spawn in quick succession and it's hard to completely eliminate them. So as you can see there, I just kind of gave up on trying to kill that last one and just focused on dodging, but it worked out. And as soon as that last aimed thing happens, then you're basically done with the stage. Now then, for a really, really cool boss fight, I love the stage 5 boss. And yes, they're talking about a meteor, because that's basically the reason behind this entire incident, is the fact that a meteor is about to crash into Gensokyo. Um, I guess it's that thing that you can see in the background. Don't worry, the graphics will get a lot better in the new game. Alright, I don't know why I'm waiting so long in the dialogue. Maybe I was explaining something. Anyway, Ryoko is our stage 5 boss, and she's a lot like um, Yaizaki in the sense that she's the spirit or the... She's the spirit of an inanimate object. In this case, Ryoko is like the spirit of that meteor. Now, for the first non-spell, it's very generous if you stay in the middle. You don't want to go to the side, because if you go to the side, you might die. Now, right there, I just, like, didn't see the thing coming directly at me, so I didn't sidestep, but that wasn't, like, bad RNG or anything. Now, the first spell is the hardest thing she has in the fight, simply because of how random it is. Like... Um, you'll have to go away from the side sometimes if you get the bad RNG in the middle. Now, I did die, and I don't really know what happened there. It just kind of happened. Um, yeah, you, you still need to be careful, because the way these things overlap can be really, really tricky and mean. Now, for the second nod, I highly recommend going to the side. Don't stay in the middle for this second nod, because it is a death trap. Now, th the advantage you have is that the gaps between the little ball bullets is bigger than in the first nod spell, I'm pretty sure. So you have more of a gap to move in. Now, that was probably the worst RNG you ever get on that nod, but that happens very rarely. That nod is actually a lot easier than it looks. Now, for the second spell, I like to start in the middle, move upwards, and then move to the left or the right and then start streaming downwards. And this works because of the way the clouds spawn. Um, the clouds tend to spawn more often when you're far from Ryoko rather than when you're under her, so moving to the left or the right after that initial stream will allow her to spawn more clouds for you to make use of. And yes, that is the gimmick of this fight, is that the clouds will erase bullets, which might make it seem like it trivializes the fight, and to be fair, I do think this fight is pretty easy. Oh, by the way, get yourself on the top of the gauge here for a safe spot. Um, once you get into that safe spot, all you need to worry about is streaming to the right. 
Um, I did fail this time around because I wasn't being careful enough because it's not as trivial as it seems to dodge the gaps from behind because they are small, but that's the only thing you need to dodge. And of course the aimed meteors, but yeah, make use of that trick. It's a good trick. Now the last spell is about making a root. Um, I unfortunately forgot my root, so I had to improvise in this run. Um, but it's not really that hard to figure out. With just a few spell practice attempts, you'll figure it out pretty easily. Just remember that the explosions always start on the right and then to the left. I think I died here simply just because I got hit while going through one of the meteor waves. Um, it can be pretty dangerous to try to go through these from the top of the screen. It is a method that I like to use, but um, you gotta be careful. And be careful when going in between the meteors. You gotta be as central as possible, because if not, then you'll get hit by the edges of the of the white balls. But overall, despite me failing like everything in this boss fight, it's actually one of the easier bosses in the game. It has the most tricks to it to help you. Now then. Stage 6 is probably the hardest stage portion in the game. Well, not in the game actually, but in, in the main game. Um, it starts off with aimed stuff, and you don't need to kill both sides of the screen because you're not going to be able to. Now, stage 6 is actually ironically pretty short in general, even with the boss fight included, which is pretty nice. Now, you're going to have to do some streaming here. Now, I don't remember if this part's static or not. Eridum can, Eridum can clarify if it is or not, but um, be careful. This part here, also be careful. It's surprisingly tricky. Now, for this section here, you'll want to make sure that you kill these ball fairies as soon as possible, because if you're not killing them, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Um, and the reason you want to kill them is because that streaming part will come back, and if you haven't killed these ball fairies by the time this streaming part comes, you might have an overlap. And trust me, you do not want any overlaps in this stage, because this stage is pretty tough. Now, once you've gotten ri rid of those fairies, um... You'll want to start trying to kill these as much as possible. Now, again, it is kind of random with how these spawn and how these will fire, so sometimes you'll just get really screwed, but most of the time it should be fine. And now for our final boss, aka the one who made the meteor and who thinks that being called an evildoer is an insult, even though she's basically trying to destroy the planet. This is Sojako. She is a very, very angry Daitengu, and she can cause natural disasters. So, um, her nons... At least the first two ones are pretty easy. Uh, this first one in particular reminds me of Utsuho's first one in the sense that you're probably never going to fail it. Like, I've never failed it. It's really hard to fail. Now, for this first spell, you, you can kind of lure her off screen a bit, which I don't know if it actually helps that much, but I, I like doing that anyway. Um, the goal, though, is to go on the opposite side of the screen that she fires the bubble in, because the way this spell works is that she'll either fire a bubble on the left or the right, and you'll need to go on the side opposite from that in order to be safe. Now, yeah. This is one of the hardest spells in the game. It's it's one of the top three, which is Red Tongue, Akami's Final, that is, the mid-boss spell in Stage 4, and this spell. These are the top three hardest ones in the game. And they're all just really random. Which kind of explains it. Now the second non isn't that bad. It's got a weird trick to it. I just kind of derped here. It's actually kind of an embarrassing mistake. But yeah, it, it's not as hard as I it made it look here. I just kind of... I was a little too high on the screen and I wasn't moving down with the needles. So I got surprised there. Now for the second spell... You're going to want to damage rush her as much as possible. The thing is, you're going to be forced away from the middle, and you have to dodge pretty high on the screen, which is unusual for a Toho spell. But anyway, the reason you want to damage rush her is because it's very, 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 very important that you kill the spell in two waves. If you have to dodge a third wave, it could get pretty dangerous from what I recall. So as long as you're damage rushing her and moving away from the middle as late as possible, you should be able to finish it off. Now then, um... The second half of the stage is pretty tricky um, because the way these spawn is that if they all spawn far away from you, you won't be able to reach them in time, so you can get kind of walled, but usually it should be okay. Reimu B is admittedly not the best at that part. Heaven help you if you're playing Marissa B. Actually, Marissa B's speed might make up for that. Anyway, the last fairy is really nice and gives you a 1-up. 
It's also really easy to dodge, so I mean you don't really have much to worry about here. Okay. And try to hug the vortex as much as possible. I believe you can get two 100% from this vortex, but it's really hard to do. I think I've done it before, but like the weird thing about this game is that or this vortex in particular is that it lasts throughout the dialogue. Well, vortex is always last throughout the dialogue if they're still on screen, which means that if there's a vortex during a dialogue, you can make use of it, which is really nice. All right, now for the second half of the Sojiko fight. So now, for some reason, the spells are going to be easier than the nons. Yeah. Um, anyway, this third non isn't too bad, but don't underestimate it. You can get surprised by the red bullets that come down. All right, so for this spell, it is static. I just haven't memorized it, so I had a lot of trouble here. Um, if you don't want to memorize it, if you're too lazy like me, a good trick to keep in mind is to try not to stay in the middle forever because I do know there is a part in this spell where you get walled if you're in the middle, so you'll have to move to the sides. Um, over here, I was just too late in going back into the middle after going to the side, so I kind of got killed by the sun spawning the bullet in my face. So again, if you memorize the spell, things like that won't happen. I don't know if the needles are random, they might be, but I do know that the sun balls are static. Now this non-spell is about um, trying not to be in the middle if it gets dangerous. Like I do a lot of streaming outward and a lot of patience is needed on this. Um, it's pretty tricky because of how these balls overlap. And again, um, you need to be mindful of how those lasers spawn. I, I, I was really cautious about staying away from the middle, but as you can see, it worked really smoothly, and it didn't last that long. Now, for this spell here, I hear that on lower difficulties, you can trivialize it by going to the sides of the screen, but you don't really want to do that on Lunatic because it doesn't even really help. So just stay in the middle and hold your ground. It's a really easy spell, actually, although in this run, I think I got the worst possible RNG you can get. Actually, no, that wasn't even that bad. But it can be a little bit tricky sometimes, so don't underestimate it. Now for the timeout spell. You'll want to start the timeout spell in the top left. Now, it's got three phases to it, and they're all pretty easy, actually. This survival is actually pretty doable, um, but it's tricky the first few times you play it. You just have to adjust to it, but once you've adjusted to it, it's really easy to capture. Um, I think I got- I did get it this run. Spoilers. <laughs> Now, on the second wave, you'll want to be um, in the middle left. That's why I started in the top left, so I could just position myself there at the end of that first wave. Now, this is the hardest part in the spell, simply because it can be a little tricky for you to dodge these um, purple and orange bullets, but it is surprisingly consistent once your brain gets used to it. You just have to kind of learn how to dodge these. I can't really explain it myself, but I try to go through two before dodging the third one, if that makes sense, like go in between two and then dodge the third one later. Now the last wave is the easiest one. Um, the only trick to the last wave is to make sure that you don't let the spiral catch up to you. If you let the edges catch up to you, then you're going to get into a situation where you'll have to do a death dodge through a ball. So don't let it catch up to you. Be very aggressive in your movement, especially if you're Reimu who's not that fast. But yeah, it actually gets easier as time goes on because the, when more balls spawn, you get more of a defined path, which is ironic. Alright, now for the very last spell in the game. Now, I feel bad about giving away the secret, but because this is an LP, I feel obligated to make kind of a guide. So, I will be giving away the secret to this last spell. So, on the first wave, you want to stream upwards. And yeah, it becomes really easy if you do that. Also, I want to point out how cool looking the lasers are on this spell. And then move upward and start streaming down. Now when you stream down here, you'll have to make left and right movements. Um, but it's still very easy as long as you don't move too much. You can still find nice gaps. Now, um, I did kind of mess up here for some reason. I don't even know what necessarily happened. I think I just tried to move up too early and I clipped the edge of one of those rice bullets. Um, anyway, for this section here, the important part is that when you move, there comes a time 
when like the lasers themselves will like spawn in a really horizontal weird position and basically you I can't even explain it basically just you'll you'll know what I mean when you play the spell you'll get confused into thinking you can go up but in reality you'll die so instead you need to go left it's not that bad though it's pretty easy for a spell I think there's Definite RNG on the final phase, but you can get consistent at it if you know what you're doing. And by the way, I want to point out I didn't write the ending dialogues. I didn't write any of the endings, so don't don't harp on me if there's any weird inconsistencies or um, typos. So, yeah, that was the Shattered Sky. I, I kind of feel bad that I had to do the post-commentary thing, but um, I do acknowledge that just... I don't have enough time to do another run. I mean, I do, but like, I had already done like four or five takes, and I don't want to do any more takes throughout the day, especially since I do want to make sure that this run gets out today, which is the day that the game is released. In fact, there's already a download link, and I'll put it in the description. Um, anyway, yeah. This is Shattered Sky, a game that I actually have been kind of involved in. I didn't do too much for it, but I, I did do... A lot, I think. A nice chunk. Uh, mostly just dialogues and lunatic testing, as it says right there. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, there will be another game in this series. Um, it's already in development, but it's very early in development, so... There isn't a lot of information that we can reveal yet, but just know it's going to be a lot better than this game too, um, because the team has gotten a lot better. So, yeah. Anyway, next time we're going to be doing all the extra stages and stuff, so do, do, do look forward to that. Do look forward to that. Alright. I'll see you guys then.